So without further delay, I'd like to begin today's proceedings by introducing Director of Athletics, Boo Corrigan. Uh, thanks, Shaq. Um, first and foremost, I'd like to welcome uh, Mike and Nancy. Welcome. It's great to have you. Uh, as a former coach and a coach, we, we, we love that lineage, if you will. Uh, Beth, Isabella, Amelia, and Evie, here you are. Happy birthday on your third birthday today. So it's great to have you guys. It's great to have you guys as part of the West Point family. Um, what I'd like to do is take a minute and, and walk through the timeline that, that we have um, to get us to this point. So on, on the 15th, uh, Sunday the 15th, uh, General Caslin and myself uh, decided to terminate Rich Ellerson's contract. It was at that point in time that we established a search committee of two people, and the two people would be the superintendent and myself. Uh, we took Monday the 16th to talk with current members of our football team, to talk to former members, and, and other friends who we know in the industry to try to come up with our list of potential candidates. We vetted that list on Tuesday and Wednesday in order to set up the interviews. Interviews took place on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Monday with myself and General Caslin in attendance. Um, each of these interviews took place off post. As we went through that, we established a number of tenants that we were looking for in this job. What were the most important qualities that we were looking for in this job? First and foremost, we were looking for an understanding and appreciation of West Point in our mission at West Point. We were looking for someone with the ability to inspire. We were looking for someone who had an established tradition of winning. And fourth, an insatiable appetite to recruit. And not only to recruit, the 17, 18 year old, but to recruit them to West Point. As we looked at this, there was one person out of a number of people who were interested in this job. Let me stress again, the, it, it was reassuring to see the value of West Point when this job came open and the number of people that were interested in this job. What West Point is, the young men that they get to lead while they're here the character of the people involved at West Point. But as we went through this, there was one name that came up over and over again as we talked to other people. Then we had the, the opportunity to meet with Coach Munkin. And it was his want, his drive, his dedication to always do things right that led us to this moment. It is now my pleasure, on behalf of the superintendent, to introduce you to your new football coach, Jeff Munkin. Thank you. I want to start by, by thanking General Caslin and Boo and, uh, and just the, uh, the process, the professionalism, it, just incredible to be a part of, of just the process of being hired as the coach at Army and, uh, and, and how that felt to be approached by, by the, these gentlemen. And, uh, and, and it, it really was with, with incredible professionalism and and uh, graciousness that they reached out and, and uh, tremendously honored and feel privileged to stand before you as the head coach at the United States Military Academy. And uh, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity uh, to, to be the head football coach at one of the, the world's premier academic institutions, one of the most storied football programs in college football. and. Uh, to, to walk through last night through the Hall of Fame and see the, the national championships, the Heisman trophies, the, uh, the football coaches that have, have been the head coach, been assistant coaches here, just to read the names and to join that group of, of men is, is an incredible feeling. Um, I, I'm, I'm excited about getting started and uh, we're, we're, uh, we're, we're gonna work through this process over the next few days and weeks to put together a program that, uh, that our Army is going to be proud of. Our Army deserves the best, and we're going to give them that. Uh, I, you can't imagine the sense of pride that I feel, that I, that I know my parents and my, 
my beautiful wife Beth, my family, my children feel in being a part of this special place. And uh, there, there is no other place like West Point. And, uh, and we're proud to be here, to, to be a part of developing these cadets, uh, to be a, a part of the mission. And I accept this position with just a tremendous sense of responsibility to this institution, to the young men and women who are here, to the men and women who serve all over the globe, uh, to the history of this program and the history of this institution. Uh, to be the head football coach is just an incredible honor. Uh, we're going to produce results on Saturday afternoons. And we're going to do that by playing a certain brand of football. And I, I had the good fortune of, of working for Paul Johnson for 13 years. Uh, Paul Johnson's the head coach at Georgia Tech. Uh, I joined him as an assistant for the first time as a graduate assistant at the University of Hawaii in 1989. And, uh, and then was able to join him as a full-time coach in 1997 at Georgia Southern. And we had an incredible run uh, under his leadership. And, and he believed in some things that, that uh, you know, I, I've carried with me. Uh, it's a philosophy that I, I bought into and I believe. And my experience at, at, a, at one of our other nation's academies uh, was a great experience. And I learned a great deal about coaching at at, at an academy and about the young men and women who make a commitment to attend these institutions. And we're not going to masquerade about who we are. There will be very few Saturdays where we are bigger, faster, more athletically, more athletic collectively than, than the teams that we play. But we always believed that it didn't take the best players to win, it takes the best team to win. And we're going to field the best team. We're going to be tough. We're going to be disciplined. We're going to play with pride, with passion, with great effort. We're going to field a team that everybody's going to be proud of to say that's our team. That's Army's football team. And that's the kind of team I want to represent a Jeff Munkin football team. When somebody watches Army play football, I want them to turn the TV off and say, I've never seen a team play like that before. I've never seen guys play so hard play with such great passion and effort and energy, that'll be our football team. That doesn't guarantee victory, but without that, we're not going to have a chance. So I can assure you we'll have that, and we'll play with, with those characteristics, and that's going to give us a chance to win every single time we play. Um, we're going to put together a great staff. We'll put together a staff that, uh, of, of great teachers, leaders, good men who believe in the mission of this academy and, and who will, will consider it an honor to be here as well. I, just as Boo mentioned, uh, the, the great response he had uh, about coaches who were interested in being the head coach, I've gotten a similar response uh, when I've reached out to coaches about being assistant coaches here. Um, thrilled to be here. As I said, it's an opportunity of a lifetime. It's, it's an opportunity I wouldn't have if it weren't for some very special people. My parents are here, Mike and Nancy Monk, and they live in the Chicago area. I grew up there. My dad was my high school coach. Uh, he's got four brothers, all of whom were, were head high school coaches in the state of Illinois while I was growing up. And you talk about some influential men. Those five boys produced seven sons who are now football coaches. So there's 12 of us in two generations that, that do this for a living. My mom was a, a high school teacher and guidance counselor my whole life. Uh, and, and they're here, and, and I'm, I'm proud to have them here uh, and have their support. My beautiful wife, Beth, uh, and my, my three children, Isabel, who's 10, Amelia, who's 6, and uh, Evangeline, who's celebrating her third birthday today. Uh, just uh, what a wonderful support system I have. Um, Paul Johnson, who I mentioned, who I, who I coached for for 13 years, and, and just what a, a, a tremendous influence he's been on, on me as a football coach. There's very few football coaches that uh, are as good at what they do as Paul Johnson. He, he runs the option and does it as good as anybody in the country. And uh, very fortunate to have worked for him for, for so long and learned so much from him. Uh, I'm thankful for the, for the, to the folks at, at Georgia Southern uh, who gave me my first opportunity to be a, a, a head coach in college. We had a, a great deal of success, but it's because of, of those folks, Dr. Bruce Gruby, 
who was the president, Sam Baker, who was the athletics director uh, when they hired me four years ago, and Dr. Brooks Keel, who's our, our current president, just an, an incredible gentleman, uh, and the, the graciousness that he and Tom Kleinlein, our AD, uh, showed me when they allowed me the opportunity to talk to Army about being the head football coach here. And uh, without that opportunity to, to be the head coach at Georgia Southern, I wouldn't be here today, so I'm, I'm incredibly thankful to them as well. Uh, I'm anxious to get to work. Uh, we're already assembling a staff. Uh, we've already began the process of, of recruiting and, uh, and reaching out to young men all over the country who I know will be excited to, to join us and join this program and, uh, and get Army football back to national prominence where we belong and, and to give our cadets, our men and women who serve, uh, all of those that have served and all those that cheer for Army, a team they can be proud of. I'm, I'm very pleased to be here with you today. Uh, I, I thank you for being here. It means a great deal to me to see so many people here to support us, and uh, we're ready to go. So uh, let's go Army, and we will beat Navy. Speaking with questions here, please identify yourself and your organization before we ask your question. Go ahead, Charles. Sure. Charles Grievous with GoBlackKnights.com. First of all, welcome, Coach. Um, both you and Boo mentioned the importance of recruiting. Uh, there are approximately about 20 players have already committed verbally to Army. Can you talk about the strategy relative to reaching out to those players and those you have on the radar? The, uh, the staff that's in place has, have reached out to all those guys and, and uh, again, solidified their commitments. Uh, there's a number of, of, of young men who are out there still that we're going to have to uh, get our hooks into, as they say, and, uh, and, and, and get them here, give them a chance to see this great institution, these facilities. Facilities here are amazing, and uh, I'm, I'm confident that when we get these young men here and they get an opportunity to, to see this place, that, that they're going to be sold as well. So we're excited about that. Okay. And if there was a list of five things that you had to do right out the right off the bat to get this program where it needs to be, what would those be? One is recruit. That's, that's number one. We've got to, get, we've got to get the right kids in here, the right young men for this program, for this institution. We've got to identify them. Uh, we do that by, by developing a, uh, and putting together a staff that can go in and, and evaluate and seek out those young men that, that belong here at West Point. And we'll do that. Um, I don't. I don't know if there's other things on the list that I could add three, four, and five that are more important. Those are the two things we need to do. We're, we're going to hire staff. We're going to hire great staff, and we're going to go find the the, the prospects that are going to help us uh, carry our, our program into the future and be the future of Army football. Uh, the next would be the return of our our veteran players, the guys who are here, and and getting getting them ready to go for the 2014 season, for spring practice, for summer workouts, for fall camp. Uh, recruit, retain the ones we've got, and develop them all. And that, those are the three things that, that I think are really important uh, in, in, in building and, and, uh, and carrying a program through from year to year. There, you, you won't sustain success unless uh, those things are, are continuous in the program. Recruit, retain, and develop. Go ahead, Joe. Uh, Coach, welcome to West Point. Joe Sear, WKDT, the West Point radio station. Have you been given a mandate? Have you been told you got to win? I mean, this isn't your team. You're coming in cold. You've never seen these guys before. You're going to start from scratch. How much of a lead time do you feel you need before you can make a winner out of this group? Let, 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 me, let me jump on that so, first. I, I think the important thing is, and, and Coach Munkin just, just talked about that, is uh, the young men that are in our program right now. Um, what, what y'all will find with, with Jeff is that uh, there's not a whole lot of details that he doesn't already know the answer to, and, and there's more details below each one of those. I think Coach Munkin and the thing that excited the superintendent and myself was he felt as if this was a situation where he could come in and make a difference right away. You know, I mean, as, as we went out looking for a coach, he understood what it was. He didn't come here not to win. I'll let him answer the balance of the question. He, you know what I'm saying? From a mandate standpoint, any pressure that we were to put on him, this is a self-driven man that's got as much pride in what he does and how he does it that, that made him so appealing to us. So, 
I'll let you answer the rest of it. Uh, and and I, I, Boo, I think, covered it. I, I can assure you this. There's nobody here that will have higher expectations for our team or for our performance than me. Nobody's going to put more pressure on me than me. I want to win. And uh, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't take kindly to anything else. Second place is, 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 is no fun for anybody. And we got a, a 4,400 cadets here that we're going to send out as military officers. And when they go out and do their work, we don't expect them to come in second place. So that's not going to be an option around here either. Okay. Go ahead, Ron. Coach uh, Ron Mergenthal, examiner.com. Uh, having coached at Navy, was it your aspiration to someday return to an academy, or was this just, just something that happened? I had hoped that, uh, that I would have a chance to, to coach in a, at a service academy again. I, I told my wife about five weeks ago uh, when, when something came up, and I was, I was frustrated. I, it, it was uh, having to do with probably a discipline issue or something like that. I said, gosh, I need to go back and, and coach at a service academy. I don't have to worry about this stuff with those kids. And uh, it just so happens a few weeks later we were having some conversations. So I, I, uh, I, I, I kind of set it off, off-handed and, and uh, off the cuff. But I've always felt uh, a, uh, just uh, an in incredible sense of connection to, uh, to the service academies. Certainly Navy because I coached there for six years. And uh, those, those young men were incredibly special, as special as any kids I've ever coached. And uh, the things that they do, the maturity that they have um, as, as undergraduates is, is, is apparent. They're different. They're different than, than, uh, than a typical college-age student. There's something special about them. And, and I, I think that was the reason we were able to win, uh, because what I said is true. There weren't, many, there weren't many Saturdays at the Naval Academy where we were bigger, faster, uh, more athletic collectively as a team than the other team. And we had some incredibly talented guys, and we got some talented football players here, and we'll have some more. Uh, but but as a football team, that's that's the reality of of academy football. But uh, but I also believe what I said that it doesn't take the best players to win; it takes the best team to win. And and our guys had a tremendous sense of loyalty to each other, uh, and and I I expect the same here and we're going to get our guys to play that way and and not just to play at West Point but to play for West Point and there's a big difference in that one word and just as I'm I'm not here to coach at West Point I'm here to coach for West Point and uh, and we'll win because that passion and that energy and that trust in each other is going to come through every time we play. Boo just a follow up you went <clears throat> it was nine days between the firing of Coach Ellison and the hiring of Jeff, was the, had you compiled in your own mind some kind of a short list before the Rich Ellison announcement was made or did this kind of come off the cuff, quick, 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 quick? We, um, first and foremost, we supported Coach Ellison until the, until the last day, and I think that's important for Coach as well as the staff. Um, and, again, we believed in them. Are, are you doing your due diligence? Yes, you are. You, you know what I'm saying? Because you, you just don't know what happens in this profession. So... Um, yeah, there were some people that we had thought about as far as doing any type of deep dive. No, we had not. Go ahead, Zell. Uh, Coach Muggin, Salen, turn it off from the Times Tower Record. I talked to one of your former Navy players, and he said you came up with a slogan, little things make big things happen. Um, just talk about details here and how detail-oriented you'll be with fundamentals and how important they will be to winning at West Point. I, I can't claim that, that saying. I'm sure that came from somewhere else. Maybe, maybe your father or one of your <laughs> uncles, you know. But I, I believe that, uh, that, that all the little details are important. And, uh, and we'll coach the little details in terms of fundamentals. But all the details in terms of day-to-day uh, -day operations, just beginning with recruiting. I want to know everything about a young man that we're going to be recruiting, not just that he's a good football player, not just that he's, he's got good grades, uh, I want to know all the little things about that guy and, and, and if he's going to be the right guy for our program and for our team um, in terms of our coaches and our support staff and our uniforms, our meeting rooms, what the locker room looks like, everything. It, 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 it's detailed to the letter. And uh, I don't know any other way. I'm wired that way. I'm sure there's other coaches that, 
that uh, are, are more laid back on some of those details, and I'm not that way. I think all those little details make a difference, and uh, it's amazing that, uh, that, that, that when you coach those things and when you teach those things and emphasize those things, how often you can point to those little details and the differences that they made on a Saturday afternoon. Well, those joining us via teleconference, any questions for those people joining us via teleconference? Okay, no questions on the telephone. Back here, Randall Call. Kevin Gleason, go ahead. Hey, Coach. Kevin Gleason, the Times Herald Record in Middletown. Just a quick thought on your experiences at Navy, and why do you think it, it, you guys had so much success against Army? It's been, it's been a long-standing... Uh, streak against Army, and given your experiences there, why, why do you think you guys were better than Army? I, I can't speak for, uh, for, for Army's side of it during those six years that I was there. Uh, I only know what, what we were experiencing on the other side, and I, I think we had a team that, that possessed all the qualities that, that I've talked about today, and, uh, and, and I believe that when our team possesses those same qualities, that we'll be on the other side of it. And uh, I, 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 I'm happy to say I'm 6-0 and in that Army-Navy game, but uh, on the wrong side. I'm, I'm going to get on the right side this time. <laughs> Go ahead, Joe. One more time, Coach. All right, we've watched the option here at Army for a long time. We started with the straight wishbone. It evolved through the 90s, went away for a while, it's come back. Meanwhile, you see college football, there's 50 different variations of the option these days. You know, they've run out of nicknames for them. What kind of option do you run? Having not seen Georgia Southern, I have to ask. Uh, the, the, uh, the under center stuff that we do is going to be uh, very similar to what you see Paul Johnson doing at, at Georgia Tech. Um, and Paul was, a, Paul was a master of using different formations and, and uh, running the same plays out of different formations and, and coupling play action passes along with, with all of those actions and angles to, uh, to have a, a, an incredibly successful offense. Um, we've, we've added in the last three years uh, a, a group of plays out of the shotgun and we really felt like over the years there were just times where, where defenses would stymie us under center and we needed to have something to go to that, that would, would give us some different angles and actions. And, and we found that, that uh, I guess, what, what more traditional teams are doing with, with uh, shotgun option now uh, are some of the things that we're doing as well. So I can't tell you how much we'll use under center and how much uh, of the gun stuff will, will be a part of it. It's going to be based on the guys we've got in the program and, and, uh, and sometimes what we feel is going to be best against a particular opponent. Now the questions for Coach, we'll break for a quick photo session, then we'll come back here for some brief one-on-one -on -one opportunities. Go ahead, Ron. Oh, Coach, do you consider yourself something of a, <clears throat> excuse me, the disadvantage recruiting-wise now because you're coming in kind of like midstream, if you know what I mean? Because not, not, only, not only you're trying to contact Coach Ellison's recruits, but now go out and get your own. Does that put you at a little bit of a competitive disadvantage right now versus the other coaches? We're going to be behind, but, uh, but I don't think it, it, it takes long to get – caught back up and uh, our staff will, will be busy on the phones and when the opportunity uh, for us to go back out on the road uh, per NCAA rule comes up here in mid-January, we'll get back out and we'll have a chance to, to see those guys face to face. It's amazing um, sometimes the, the newness of, of, of a program and the appeal that there is there. And I look at the last few schools I've been at some of our best recruits, some of the best players we've had in the program came in the, in the, in the, first, the first recruiting class. Jarek McKinnon, who, who was our quarterback at Georgia Southern, uh, was a senior this year. Uh, he's an NFL prospect. He's probably going to go to the combine. Uh, arguably our best football player in our program. And uh, we waltzed into his living room in the middle of January. We hadn't had one conversation with him. We got him on campus. and. And he, and he came to Georgia Southern. And uh, I look back at the same Georgia Tech and at Navy prior to that. Uh, when you first get on board and you come in and, and everything's new and fresh and there's an excitement about that, and I think we'll be able to take advantage of that. 
ahead, Joe. One more, Coach, on the other side of the ball. Do you, on your defense, do you have a system that you put your players into, or do you look at your players and let your defense evolve out of the players? We're going we're gonna to put our players in the best position to, to be successful, and I can't tell you exactly what that's going to look like at this point. Uh, the, the thing I do know about our offense is that these guys have experience running option football, and, and it's going to be a lot easier to come in and, and uh, though the terminology may change, the, the fundamentals are going to be very similar and that's going to be uh, an advantage for us. Defensively, we're going to have to evaluate who we've got and, uh, and who our best players are, try to get our best players on the field and give them an opportunity to, to succeed and to make plays. And, uh, and I won't tell you what that's going to be at this point. I don't know.